Allah has two hands? Come on, we believe that or not? Both the Bible and the Quran use figures of speech or modes of expression that the authors didn't intend to be understood literally. For example, in Psalm 19, a poetic section of the Bible, King David said, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the skies proclaim the work of his hands. In saying the heavens declare God's glory, David wasn't ascribing vocal cords and audible speech to the heavens. And by the same token, when he said the skies proclaim the work of his hands, he wasn't attributing human appendages like hands to God. Through these idioms or figures of speech, David was giving poetic expression to the truth found in Genesis 1 that God by his powerful word made the heavens, and the heavens therefore serve as visible evidence of his invisible glory and power. The idea in view here was stated more literally by the Apostle Paul in Romans 1 when he said, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made so that they are without excuse. Through a surface reading of the Quran, we find the same thing. Imitating Jewish and Christian idioms, the author of the Quran also described Allah making everything with his hands. For example, in Surah 51:47, it says, We have made the heavens with our hands, and we expanded it. As well, in Surah 36, 71, it says, Do they not see that it is we who have created for them, among the things which our hands have fashioned, cattle which are under their dominion? What these passages state figuratively, other passages state in a more straightforward or literal way. For instance, in Surah 5, 17, it says, For to Allah belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth and all that is between. He creates what he pleases, for Allah has power over all things. And in Surah 2, 117, it says, To him is due the primal origin of the heavens and the earth. When he decrees a matter, he says to it, Be, and it is. However, a closer reading of the Quran reveals that while it sometimes uses hands figuratively, there are other times when it uses the word hands literally for Allah. The clearest example of this is in Surah 3875, where Allah rebukes Satan for refusing to obey the command to bow down to Adam. Allah said, O Iblis, Satan, what prevents you from prostrating yourself to one, that is Adam, whom I have created with my own two hands? Are you haughty, or are you one of the high and mighty ones? What is especially noteworthy in this verse, besides the fact that Allah commanded Satan to commit shirk, and the fact that Satan, rather than Allah, opposed idolatry, is the reason why Adam was singled out as a special object of prostration. According to the verse, the reason Satan should have bowed down to Adam is because Allah created Adam with his own two hands, which is just to say, Adam was honored and set apart from and above other creatures and made an appropriate object of reverence and honor by the angels because he was made with Allah's own two hands. If the word hands were being used figuratively here, then, there, then the verse wouldn't make any sense. It wouldn't show that Adam in particular, rather than everything in general, from every star in the heavens to every grain of sand on the seashore, should be bowed down to. While it's an appropriate source of embarrassment for many Muslims to say that the eternal creator of all space and time actually has hands, which presupposes space and time in which to exist, many other Muslims frankly admit the obvious conclusion that Allah has hands according to this verse. Allah described in the Quran that he has two hands when he addressed Iblis, Satan. And he told him, what prevented you from prostrating to what I have created with my two hands? Allah created Adam with his two hands. But there are certain things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created with his own hands, made it with his own hand as a reference to its greatness. Adam is one. This conclusion follows not only from a straightforward reading of Surah 3875, but from several other lines of evidence as well. For example, in what Muslims refer to as a mutawatir hadith, which means a hadith that is so abundantly attested that it can't be denied, in one of these so-called mutawatir hadith, we're told that on the day of judgment, people will look for some special individual, somebody worthy enough to intercede for them with Allah. And the person who will stand out first in their minds is Adam. 
And the reason he will be considered first is because he was supposedly made with Allah's own two hands. Narrated Annas, Allah's apostle said, the believers will be assembled on the day of resurrection and they will say, let us look for someone to intercede for us with our Lord so that he may relieve us from this place of ours. So they will go to Adam and say, you are Adam, the father of mankind, and Allah created you with his own hands and ordered the angels to prostrate before you. And he taught you the names of all things. So please intercede for us with our Lord so that he may relieve us. Adam will say to them, I am not fit for that. And then he will mention to them his mistake, which he has committed. Yeah. When the people, hadith is shafa'at, when the people will come to the messengers, and they will go to Adam and they want him to go to intercede for Allah to begin judgment. Ya Adam, anta Abu al-Bashar, you are the father of humanity. Khalaqaka Allahu biyadayih. Allah created you with his own hands. The uniqueness of Adam as the person whom Allah created with his own hands is further demonstrated by another hadith which speaks of an alleged debate that took place between Adam and Moses, where both of them try to get the better of the other by pointing out how the other had failed even though favored by Allah in some unique way or ways. Abu Huraira reported Allah's messenger as saying there was an argument between Adam and Moses in the presence of their Lord. Adam got the better of Moses. Moses said, Are you that Adam whom Allah created with his hand and breathed into him his spirit and commanded angels to fall in prostration before him, and he made you live in paradise with comfort and ease? Then you caused the people to get down to the earth because of your lapse? Adam said, Are you that Moses whom Allah selected for his messengership and for his conversation with him and conferred upon you the tablets in which everything was clearly explained and granted you the audience in order to have confidential talk with you? What is your opinion? How long was the Torah written before I was created? Moses said, Forty years before. Adam said, Did you not see these words? Adam committed an error and he was enticed to do so? He, Moses said, yes, whereupon he, Adam said, do you then blame me for an act which Allah had ordained for me 40 years before he created me? Allah's messenger said, this is how Adam got the better of Moses. In another version of this hadith, we learn that Adam's response to Moses had an extra special punch. Moses had pointed out that Adam sinned even though he was created with Allah's hands and in his reply to Moses that he had been given the Torah, Adam reminded Moses that Allah wrote the Torah with his own hand. Narrated Abu Huraira, the prophet said, Adam and Moses argued with each other. Moses said to Adam, O oh Adam, you are our father who disappointed us and turned us out of paradise. Then Adam said to him, O oh Moses, Allah favored you with his speech, that is, he talked to you directly, and he wrote the Torah for you with his own hand. Do you blame me for an action which Allah had written in my fate forty years before my creation? So Adam confuted Moses. Adam confuted Moses, the prophet added, repeating the statement three times. الحديث بتاع المحاجة حاجة موسى آدم موسى وآدم دي ديدت ولا نظر أتقرأ أن الله خلقك بيدي أتقرأ أن أنت موسى الذي كتب الله له التوراة بيده وكتبنا له في الألواح الله رد التوراة with his own hands Reflecting on this teaching, Abdullah bin Ahmed, the son of Ahmed bin Hanbal, one of the founders of Islam's four madahabs, or schools of jurisprudence, said the following, Allah wrote the Torah for Moses with his hand while leaning back on a rock on tablets of pearl, and the screech of the quill could be heard. There was no veil between him, Allah, and him, Moses. A final line of evidence that Surah 3875 is to be understood literally stems from various statements made by Muhammad and his successors that Allah only created three, or in some traditions, four things directly with his own hands, while everything else was only created by Allah's word or power, saying to it, Be. For instance, on the authority of Abdullah ibn al-Harith, Muhammad said, Allah created three things with his hand. He created Adam with his hand, he wrote the Torah with his hand, and he planted Ferdos, that is, the Garden of Eden, with his hand. As well, in his tafsir of Surat al-Kaf, Ibn Uthaymin mentions that this is the view held by the scholars of Islam. 
The people of knowledge stated that Allah did not create anything with his hand except Adam, the paradise of Eden, for indeed he created it with his hand, and he wrote the Torah with his hand. These are three things that were by the hand of Allah, the mighty and majestic. As for those of mankind other than Adam, they were only created by the word be. Well, there are other statements in the Quran and Hadith that speak not only of Allah's hands, but of his palms and fingers, and of various actions performed by Allah, such as stroking Adam's back, placing his palm between Muhammad's shoulder blades, uh, and even that he will shake hands with people on the Day of Judgment. But most curious of all is the following Hadith in Sahih Muslim, which tells us that both of Allah's hands are right hands. It was narrated from Abdullah bin Amr that the Messenger of Allah said, those who are fair and just will be near to Allah on thrones of light. At the right hand of the most merciful, glorified and exalted is he, and both of his hands are right hands. Those who are fair and just in their rulings and towards their families and those who are under their authority. We believe that both of the hands of Allah are what? Huh? Kilta yadayhi yameen. Both of them are right. How? I don't know. Don't try. How? I don't know. Is it true that both his hands are right? Yes, it is true. The hadith says very clearly that both his hands are right. You're going to start getting confused, aren't you? Are you? Are you confused? Allah created Adam with his two hands and both of his hands are right hands. That's what we've been informed in Sayyid Bukhari and Muslim. When the companions heard that, they know what a hand is in the Arabic language. They know what a hand is. It's known in the Arabic language. The yad, the hand, it's known. How Allah's two hands are right hands, we don't know about that because he didn't give us the details. So you have to believe in it because it's mentioned in the Quran and it's mentioned in the Sunnah. And to ask about it is an innovation. Whatever else we might say about Muhammad and his newfangled religion, at the end of the day, when it comes to making things up about God, you really have to hand it to Muhammad.